Now I must tell you, I was shocked at those hands. I took the time to write to you. I know, but many of you have email. All right, those of you without email only has email. <laughs> the book of Jude is the portion of scripture that I have selected from which to speak on these two Sundays afforded me in the absence of the senior pastor. The theme, as you know, of this period has to do with knowing uh, your faith and so on. I chose Jude, but because the time is so short, the pulpit presentation has to be helped by the, what you do outside the pulpit. It, it can't be, we can't achieve the goal. That's why I said, you should read it at least 20 times before this morning. Especially those of you who never read it before. You know, we have a little problem with with the whole matter of our responsibility to know the will of God. It's not the responsibility of the leaders to know the will of God. They better know the will of God for them. But they can't know the will of God for you. And God is looking to you to carry out his will for you. He's not going to judge you as to what Pastor Rex did or didn't do, you know. And you sure can't throw that in God's face. God could say, I know you could read. I know you had good eyesight. And I know, you, I know that the Bible was in very plain modern English. I saw to that. I saw to it through translators that you had a scripture that you could really access. And you modern people, you have so many accesses. You have, uh, would you call that thing you just talked about a while ago? Facebook. Even got, even got back hair book. <laughs> I mean, so many accesses to information and knowledge. Oh, my, what are we going to answer for in this generation? You could lie in bed, turn if you like, turn on the sound system, and the scripture could be read to you from tapes. You could, you could hear it. Oh, friends. Oh, friends. Are you serious about this matter? of life and death, of hell and heaven, of eternity and God. Let's have a short prayer together. Oh, triune God who's done so much to enable us to know you and to know of you who has spared no effort even to allowing men and women in the past to lay their lives down to be sure that the Holy Scripture is preserved. Lord, this morning we confess to you. We have not really warmed up to your interest as we should. Help us now, Lord, to reinstate that flame of interest to know God, to pursue God. Forgive us our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Fill us with a new fire. And bless this word today. Amen. 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 We're even lazy with amens.
there was a guy who was very popular some years ago. I forgot his name. Uh, the singers know his name. He was, he was, he's a songwriter and song composer and singer. Very, very popular. He's, he said this. He says, Jesus rose from the dead. And you can't even get out of bed. You got a message? Hmm? You got it. Keith, Keith Green. That's the man. Yeah. He had some provocative music. All right. We're going to do the reading of Jude. Every single bit of it. Although it's going to take three minutes or more, it's important because it's the word of God that's important, not the word of Rex. All right. We're going to stand, please. So pull out the bulletin that's been given you, printed for you faithfully by Sister Maud. And here is how the reading is going to be. Each group is going to read. We have three groups in the church. My, my right, my middle, my left. We're going to begin with the folks on the right. The second is going to be you. The third is going to be you. And I pick up the four and back around to you. You got it? Now we need everyone to read. You've been learned to read. I don't want any mumbling or grumbling of God's word. I want it read as an act of worship of God. Are we ready? We now begin to read the book of Jude according to the New International Version beginning at verse 1. Well, we give you a break because they, they put it together at two and one, but you shouldn't need a moment. Let's go. Middle. Yes, left. My reading. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring a slanderous accusation against him, but said, the Lord rebuke you. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars 
for whom blackness, destruct, uh, blackest darkness has been reserved forever. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Mercy, mercy, okay, all of us will read 24 and 25 together. Please, everybody. To him... Thank you. The reading was very beautiful. Brother Adam, would you mind substituting 24 and 25 for your next, for Sunday's beautiful benediction there? We are basing our worship time on that truth, God's ability. Now I have a little request. Brother Ricardo, still here? Ricardo, where are you? Where are you down there? Ricardo, I, will, I would like us who were here at the dedication, every person who was here in 72, 40 years ago, to sing three or four songs on Sunday coming that we sang then about God's ability. I have them all listed. You remember them? He's able, he's able, I know he's able. All right, you know what? We want to sing some of those. Let the other folks know. We just come along how we used to sing. Oh, in 1972, we had some swinging times here. We had a choir, we had a choir of 30. We have quartets, ladies' groups. I mean, it was a whoo. All right. Now I'm sure having read that, you now see how, how full and comprehensive this short letter is. You know, when, we, when I was younger, there was a famous statement going around which says, be careful. Important and powerful things are wrapped up in a small packet, like a stick of dynamite. Don't despise little things. And I think sometimes the little books in the Bible, New Testament, like Philemon, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th John, 3rd John, kind of despise, ah, what they there for, building up space. But please may I say to you, if the eternal God has been pleased to allow these books to be included in his very, very exclusive domain called the Bible, oh, you know the number of books that were clamoring to be there? 
He did to study how the cannon was formed. Many claims. So any book that was finally included in this vast, influential, impactful literature that has come down to us for all these years must be essential to the entire picture that God wants to paint for us. Don't ever be pleased that your favorite book is the only book. That's why I applaud the ministry which was began here in this church, I'm not sure the years ago, I'll have to find out, called Lamp Lighters. That's no small ministry. Every single Christian should be able to say, I have at least once in my lifetime read God's entire revelation. What else could you say to him? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and essential for doctrine. All scripture. Which means all that we uphold as scripture and we in Protestant evangelical churches uphold 66 of such books in what we call the Biblios, the Bible, they should be in our consciousness. So thank God for all of you who have taken the discipline and the effort to be, what do we call them again? Lamplighters. All lamplighters now stand. Let's appreciate your... Thank you. Now we want more lamplighters. Pastor, when, when is lamplighters day? Please, oh, read that whole revelation of God. So we come then to a section by, that's called Jude. 25 little groups we call verses. Now you understand that verses are not a part of the revelation. God didn't give verses. That's a human mechanism to make it easy for us to find sections in the Bible. Just imagine if there are no verses, we'll have to go running all over the place. So it's a human mechanism. But we thank God for that. Next week, I'm going to be doing the second part, bear in mind, I'm, I'm just sketching because it's a, you, you can just read the whole stuff. Only two Sundays. Second part then, next week, will be picking up Jude when he says, um, <clears throat> but you, dear friends, verse 20, you, dear friends, build yourselves up on your most holy faith. I'm going to take off from there and develop what this most holy faith is and how we could be built up. That's going to be the practical application. Today is going to be more general on the whole issue that, that Jude introduces. And I'll try to do it as summarily as I could. Even though the Gospels record that the brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, that is, children born to Joseph and Mary after Jesus was born, you realize that's true. Mary did not remain a virgin forever. There's no such thing as the perpetual virginity of Mary. It's not true. Moses, uh, Joseph had sexual intercourse like any other man with his wife after Jesus was born. And from that relationship came other children. Jude is claiming to be one of those. Interesting how the grace of God is and the mercy of God. He did not believe on Jesus in Jesus' time. Because the Bible says when he went back to Nazareth, even his family did not say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, about him. He wasn't received. But later, somehow, the story is not told us, they turned around 
and became followers of their brother, Jesus. Not only as their brother. <laughs> you know, there's so many things wrapped up in here. And the temptation is for digression, but I better not. But you know, when, when one brother is born and then it's questions about how he was born. And the other ones come along and they found he was the older one and they found how he get to be the older one. And there's this talk about he's a special child and that Joseph was not his father. You can imagine there's problems for the brothers, you know, in terms of human things. But let's not get there right now. But you can see why the human rejection could have been he's false, he's fake, he's a fake, he doesn't belong. Anyway, yet the 25 verse epistle document before us for our study was authored by one of these brothers. His name is Jude or Judas in full meaning. Humanly, in the race of men, a Jew. And he calls himself, as he introduces the letter, the brother of James. That's how he gets his kind of authenticity. James became, for most of you all, the leader of the Jerusalem church. So it's good to say, I know you don't know me. You never heard my name. I'm not important. I'm, I, was, I was never a Jesus disciple. I'm not an apostle. But, but, but I'm writing to you and I'm claiming some sense of somebodiness by linking to my brother James, who you all know. Get it? It's good to have authentic authority when you speak. In fact, the majority of Bible scholars agree that this James was the one who eventually became the chief leader of the church. That's good, too, to see that James, the brother of Jesus, got that position in Jerusalem. The fact is, that fact, of course, is a study in itself. At Pentecost, the only people in the upper room, when the Holy Ghost came down and formed the church, the only people, according to the Bible, were people from the province of Galilee. They were all Galileans. No other part of Judea. No Jerusalem persons ever formed the nucleus of the church. At the first going, most Jerusalem people were anti-church and anti-Jesus. In any event, it is one of the brothers of Jesus, by Mary and Joseph, whom the Holy Spirit chose to be the human author of this very power-packed document, which become eventually a fixed part of what we call the Holy Scriptures the Bible. As far as can be traced, no other writer of an apostle, of an epistle, sorry, identified himself the way you did, by linking himself with another human person. Nevertheless, he moved from the human linkage, and he said, also, I am a bond servant of Jesus Christ. You know me by my brother James, but truly, I am also, like my brother James and others, linked to Jesus Christ. He, I am a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Jude confessed that he had another direction when he set to write. Something else was on his soul. Something else was on his mind. Some other burden he was carrying. But as he set to write, another powerful and urgent call led him to a different course. For reasons not made known to us, some very strong urge came upon him to write about the very powerful and destructive development of false teachers in the church. We find that in verse 3. I was eager to write to you about the salvation we share. That's what I wanted to do. But I felt I had to write, verse 3, to urge you. I had to write to urge you. Now, there were other writings, of course, in circulation with the same burden. You remember now, we're early in the church's life. Many letters that Paul wrote many people were not yet circulated to many other people. Do you follow that? So you could be in a place thinking that a certain truth is not yet being taught because you are not in connection with the message that has been taught by somebody else because it hasn't reached you yet. Remember, there's no TV, 
no radio, no printed paper, no memos, no fax machines, nothing of that. <laughs> Sometimes it took years for a document to go from one territory to another. Is it clear? So when Jude comes out with his great urge, it is not to say that that same urge to star God's people to be true to contend for the faith had not taken place through others. In fact, as you read the other epistles, you'll see that each one has done the same thing in, in, in their own time. It says, I want you to contend for the faith. Now, we move on to a little more detail. If we accept the fact that most scholars have agreed when Jude is writing to, to all believers everywhere and anywhere, Jude did not single out a church group. He says to you who are God's children, whoever you are. Took, this took place in about A.D. 67 or A.D. 68. You have to get a grasp here now. That means from the birth of Jesus. A.D. means in the year of our Lord. Some people think A.D. means after the death of Christ. No. A.D. means Anno Domina in the, in, in the lifespan of Jesus. B.C. is before Christ came. A.D. is after he arrived. Got it? So, if he wrote this in about A.D. 67 or 68, then we are obliged to conclude. We are obliged to conclude that at the time of the writing by Jude, even though the church was only about 30 or more years old, Jesus lived to be 33. The church was formed a few months after his death. Most people put that around 30-something, 30 35, 36, 37. Well, in 67, Jude is now saying that even though the church is only 30 or more years old, that already, already, in this short time, forces of deception, destruction, and divisiveness were already rampant in the church. I want to help you now to grasp something. Verse 4. For certain men whose condemnation are written about and so on have secretly slipped in among you. Some other version says, have very slyly, just like roaches come in the house through that, through a seam. Now I know your house don't have seams, but. Not, not a proper entrance. Not a valid, authentic, authenticated entrance through the, through the non-door, through the non-door. Now, if you don't miss that, I mean, if you miss that, you missed the whole point of his teaching. Certain men, this is his burden. This is his worry. This is why he's writing. Brothers and sisters, I got to let you know, something is going on in the church. Certain men, have wingled their way in among us. Now, please get this difference between forces from the outside, such as political persecution, such as suppression by authorities, that's a problem with the church. That's not this problem that Jude is addressing. He is not addressing a Roman power problem. Stopping the church's advance. He's not addressing philosophical concepts that people believe that are different from religion. No, no, he's addressing a problem of the invasion in the church of false people. Is that clear? Right. So don't misjudge what the application is to be. 
No, his sole rage is that the opposers of the true faith have been given full acceptance in the society and among the persons who do represent and proclaim the true faith. So the true faith proclaimers and the false faith proclaimers are in the same company. This is not a private church of false people. This is not a new denomination with a new rule and a new uh, constitution and a new doctrine. This is a conglomeration of one people in which some of the people conglomerated are absolute opposers of what the true church is about. Do you have that? If you missed that again. If you missed that again, you, you missed the point. This is why he's outraged. This is the main source of the deep rage in his heart. How could we have sat idly by and allow persons with such intentions and programs to be received among us? How did they get in? What happened to our guarding of the flock? Who went to sleep at the gate? Oh, I could spend a year on this one. The carelessness of believers. How careful are you about the things of God? How careful? When you have a task to do for God, how well is it done? When you bring a lesson to children about God, how much time and effort has gone into arranging it so it's true and proper, attractive and interesting? What about you as a watchman in that class? You are one of the workers. Do you slouch in here with these young lives? Do you see them as potential members of Christ's kingdom? Do you work with them in that way? Or do you see them merely as a child who, well, you got to have their one program? When we have the opposing forces from outside, that's understandable. That's expected. But when we have the destructive elements inside, the church is ruined with his inside. The careless attitudes. The non-committed attitudes. The lack of true di discipleship and loyalty. Now, I've been in long enough. I have the authority to say it to you. I, I know. I've been around. I've paid my dues. But why should anybody... Be coming in that door to worship God Almighty after 11 o'clock. Why? This public transportation. There are friends with cars. You know the distance from your home here. Why? Why? Does it mean anything to God? Do you mean anything to God? Do you come for God? Is God in the center of your concern? Is his work, his kingdom, his mission, is that your concern? What are you giving him? What has he gotten from you? What offering has flowed out of your soul, out of your heart, out of your mind, out of your thought, out of your muscle? What has he gotten from you? This is what Jude's burden. Brethren and sisters, how are these men who now wield such influence among us with such opportunity to destroy the flock, how did they get through that door and be ordained and set free? How?
So that's his burden. How could these destructive influences have access to us so easily? In the Old Testament, the Old Testament used the word watchman. The leader, the pastor was called the watchman. There's an old sermon we preached at New Year's time. Watchman, what of the night? What do you see? Who's watching? Did not our Lord declare that the true shepherd of the sheep cares for the sheep? But that there are sometimes the false shepherd who comes in only masked in a shepherd's robe. But with the intention, what? To kill, to steal, and to destroy. Didn't Paul warn when he had his leadership summit to the church in Ephesus as he left them for the final time after spending three years as their pastoral and founder? Did he not warn the leaders he left to say, Oh, brothers, take heed to yourselves first and to all the flock, O oh, whom God has placed you. For I say to you, after I depart, after I depart from you, savage wolves will come to eat you, chew you up. And also from among your very selves shall arise men who will try to pull you away from the central reality to go after them and be with them and for them. The church has always been in the danger of being eroded by falsity in the inside. This is his burden. This is the passion of this letter. So as you read it this week and reread it, ask God to let you see, let you see the need for the burden of having truth and truthfulness. And not only in doctrine, in word, because when truth is only in word, it becomes tradition. When people say, yeah, he says true, all right, but look at him. <laughs> yeah, that's a true church, but boy, they don't care. You have to envelop the whole truthfulness. We'll have to continue next week. I'm going to sing the old time hymns, but uh, just as I am. Let's stand, please. And for our hearts to be exposed to our Lord are we really are we really on the firing line do we want to see the church surge with power and strength and growth do we want to see development and progress do we want to see things moving for God in his plan in his program is that what we want just as I am without one plea, but one who shed for me, and that is me, come to me, Abraham, Sisters, brothers and sisters, if you need to say something to the Lord, come now.
you need to say something to the Lord, come right now. Just move and come. Say, Lord, here I am, waiting before you. I'm calling you believers. Where's the fire? You, you want fire, not smoke? You, you want some fire? You want this church set ablaze? You want Grace Community Church to be moving, developing, progressing, growing? Do you feel that in some measure you're hindering that? Come down. Say, oh Lord, set me aflame. Oh Jesus, set me alight. Just as I am. And waiting not. Waiting not to in my soul. seat just sitting back and relaxing and so come we need contenders we need strong voices strong attitudes strong decisions come now say Lord Jesus I am one I am one come now come give that service come give him that service that he's calling you for Lord, no more lackadaisical, no more half-stepping, no more halfway, no more grumbling, no more complaining. I'll obey. I'll do it. I'll get it done. I'll face the trials. I'll face the mountains I have to cross, but I'll get it done, God. I'll do it. You're my Lord. You're my master. It's going to be done. Just come now. Re restate that devotion. Just as I am the last call before I have the general call. Now look, if you know before God and in your conscience that you are right now not a stepping stone, you're a stumbling block. You are standing in the way. You're keeping back the great blessing of God. You come and say, Lord, oh God, change it. Change me from stumbling block to stepping stone. Come now, be honest with God. Open the heart that the floodgates of God's blessing could flow, that we could see the revival you pray for, that we could see the growth we hunger for. Come now, come now and say, Lord, Lord, fix me, fix me. Come. Friends, we had a Bible verse on the screen a while ago, which says, forgive, forgive as God forgave. Are any of you struggling right now? Hard heartedness, bitterness. Come, come, get it, get it cleaned up. Get it changed, God can soften you. Come, there's no time now. Time is short. The day is fast spent. The night is upon us. Come. Now we turn to the general audience. If you have needs like prayer for friends or those who are ill, this is a general prayer now. You just come. You have a prayer in your heart 
for situations in your life. Just come now, general call, before we have the prayer. The burdens you carry, the worries, the troubles, the needs, the frustrations, anxieties, and you need to cry to God. Come and ask you now, take a minute. Just make, come right in front, make some more room, please. Come right by the steps. Thank you. Come right out. And we ask each of you now, take a minute or two. You know, you could talk softly. That, don't disturb others. Say your little prayer now. Say that little prayer that's most important to you right now. That one sentence like, oh God, touch my husband. Or, oh God, help me with my children. Whatever it is, say, say that now. Say that to God right now before I have the general prayer. Open your lips. Declare your need. Declare your fear. Declare your burden. Touch him. Say, God, I'm touching you right now. Oh, God, how I need you to touch me back. I can't go back home as I came. I need a lifter. I need something to lift me. I need, I need, I need, I need. Oh, God, come now, God, by your spirit. Let me feel you in my soul. Let me feel you. Oh, God, let me feel you. Let me send you here. Oh, God Almighty. Don't let me go. Don't let me go. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ, the living Christ, right now move and touch every life here. You are able, Lord. You have everything it requires. Nothing is lacking with you. You have all the resources. Oh, Jesus, the living Christ, touch every heart in now. Touch every life. Holy Spirit of God, make it clear. Make it clear in the heart. Oh, Lord, move now. Move on every life. For those burdened with children, worried about the spouse situation, the home, afraid of tomorrow. It looks so dark and dismal. Scholarships for children's education. Lord Jesus, safety at home. Lord God, move now. Help. Help every searching soul. We cry to you. Oh, Jesus. We're going to sing the last one. Just as I am, thy love unknown. Just as I am thy Is any of you in this group who are seeking Jesus because he's not yet your savior if you're saying Lord I want to be a Christian just raise your hand if you come in here because you want to be a Christian because we want to talk to you separately anybody like that so I take it that all of you have come are believers is that right you know the Lord Jesus you receive him in your heart okay praise Jesus now father again oh we say unto him who is able preserve us, to present us, to be with us. Unto him who can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could even ask or think. Oh God, work everything out now. In Christ's name, amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us always. God bless you. We sing the last two stanzas of the hymn we sang at the beginning. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. You may go back to your place now. Thank you very much. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus, please. Last two stanzas. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those who are guests, please, you go upstairs to be received. Is that correct? Oh, I'm so sorry. It's changed. Downstairs, right across the way, there's a reception for you. Those who are our guests today, the rest of you all, make sure you meet somebody today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.